Hey friends, well, here we go again. I think it's finally time that I do a part four to this series on K-pop music videos that ought to be full-length movies. I was so pleased to see how well received part three was that I decided to keep going with this. There's just so many to talk about and so far I'm priding myself that I've been able to cover a different artist with each video. Time to continue with that again here. Oh, and as always, if you haven't seen any of these music videos, I'm going to give a spoiler warning just in case. And so without further ado, let's get started. Back in 2014, VIX continued their dark run with Error, which was a tragic love tale following Hongbin and his bae that I'm going to call, uh, Gertrude. The movie starts off showing life in a world of cyborgs, robots, and advanced technology in a very somber tone. Hongbin is shown trying to resurrect Gertrude back into a cyborg after we see past clips of her passing away from what it appears to be cancer. The flashbacks are shown through Hongbin's tears as he lays there crying with his shirt open to reveal his chiseled ass because, you know, they want you to know that he still eats well and takes care of himself. Now, now, ladies, fan service aside, he's not interested because he's determined to bring back Gertrude to life with her memories intact. After he successfully restores her, they're happy and it's touching to watch them be reunited again for like, uh, 10 seconds. Because the government comes right in to take her away after they bent her over to stick something in her to determine she's illegal. Wait, what? Man, that was a very weird sentence. So yeah, Hongbin breaks free to save her from the men in black to which I'm glad she wasn't wearing heels because could you imagine her trying to run away from the government in heels? Like, ew, blisters. All is hopeless, and the now cyborg couple realize that they are, instead of being fugitives on the run, they decide to self-destruct the entire facility. The two hold hands as they spend their last minutes together while the destruction goes on, knowing that their love is eternal and it transcends all. Uh, excuse me, can we have an alternate ending? I want a sequel of them on the run as a Bonnie and Clyde couple, ready to take on that evil government. That sounds more fun if you ask me. If you ever grew up in the 80s or 90s, teen romantic comedies were the thing with a beautiful message and happy ending every time. Well, it's the 2010s and we're not here to sugarcoat anything. With Ailey's I'll Show You, we're gonna get that beautiful message part, but the happy ending. <laughs> happy ending. Definitely not the euphemism, I'll tell you that now. We see Ailey go through life in school, struggling to click with people, and we watch her get bullied by M. Black's Geo. The audience continues to root for the protagonist and encourage her to be strong. Fuck, man, Ailey! You're a strong, beautiful woman! Your balls may not be on the outside like his, but you show him how much bigger they really are! So yeah, this is a teen comedy after all, and we're not getting nudity, of course, but Ailey gets the makeover of a lifetime and ends up having all the attention drawn to her. Including Gio, who is now thinking solely from another body part of his. I won't go into details about which one, but you can just use that to your imagination. The movie ends with Gio running back to her, apologizing for all the wrongdoings he's done to her. But what comes out of it is that Ailey is a new confident woman that inspires girls everywhere that they don't need the validation of her peers to make it in life. Be the best you can be and be at your happiness. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise, especially men. They're so overrated. If you've ever seen the movie Wanted, you'll know the signature action feature in that movie is the ability to curve bullets. Well, in Black's This Is War straight up copy that shit for their music video, but we instead see a love tale in this scenario. Yes, another music video that has two guys fighting over the girl. How we get to that point is we see Lee Jun being some sort of badass assassin. He was supposed to kill this girl, but like, he sees another dude going to kill her too, and he's like, Nah, bro, that's my girl to shoot dead, but like, she's hot, so like, let me go rescue her. Anyways, he tries and the other guy shoots her in the shoulder blade. Then the two guys proceed in combat with each other with their fists because guns are clearly not doing the trick here. But wait, the loser dies, so never mind. At least they were put to use. Anyway, June takes her back to his trailer. Side note, a trailer? So like, 
How much does he get paid that he has to share it with another guy too? Please change careers. Y'all are eating ramen for Christ's sake for dinner. At least get a gimpop. Oh, right. I forgot about the curving bullets thing. So yeah, Thunder nurses her back to health and falls in love with her and June's pissed and cursed a bullet to kill himself. Super romantic, I guess. E. June gives the most dramatic death face in the history of dying scenes and we're left watching the other two feel guilty that their love killed a jealous man. The end. The dark anime princesses The Makeup Dream Capture re-debuted with their song Chase Me back in 2017. And boy, they were out for vengeance. Literally. We start the movie with the guy that we learned to be a witch hunter checking in to stay at this possibly haunted hotel. He sets out to look for the ladies of Dreamcatcher as it appears to be his mission since he comes in with prepared, with fancy equipment, tons of research, and vintage photos of the girls. To which he proceeds to post them on his wall right when he enters the hotel room, because that's not pervy at all. Anyways, the girls aren't having any of this and proceeds to play tricks on him that includes nosebleeds, hallucinations, poltergeist activity, having a member stand creepily at the end of the hallway, and of course, the most important one, human sacrifice of one of their members. Oh yeah, these bitches aren't playing around. The movie carries out as the witch hunter goes mad trying to find Dreamcatcher and we begin to see small flashbacks of the girls pillow fighting in happier, brighter times because who doesn't like a good pillow fight? And from what I can tell, it's most likely not a Wednesday because on Wednesdays we wear black. Duh. Anyways, he finally breaks into the suspicious room after going all the shining on it only to see it's empty. We end on a cliffhanger, but it alludes to the girls being dead this entire time. Dun, dun, dun. You'll have to wait to watch the prequel Goodnight to see why that is, but for fan service purposes, I expect there to be a lot more pillow fights. One of the most iconic songs and music videos in K-pop ever, Big Bang's Haru Haru or Day by Day is one that's like a Korean drama but so much more, and one that even breaks the language barriers. We see the classic tale of two guys fighting over a girl. G-Dragon and Top are the ones doing the alley showdowns with the other three simply going, No bro, no. Well, in true Korean drama fashion, someone gets cancer and it just happens to be the girl they're fighting for. And we're just gonna ignore the fact that G-Dragon is wearing a girl's top in 2008. Yeah, you work it, girl. Yes, bitch! <laughs> Sorry. Anyways, the bigger climax comes from the fact that Taeyong finally shows up to deliver his lines. It was powerful, beautiful, touching. And then he disappears again, just like how the song plays out. So yeah, Top apologizes for everything because he knew GD was the one meant for her. Well, minutes later, it's already too late because the girl dies and we are then shown all the precious memories of GD with his GF. We end on a sad note that, and the audience is left wondering if G-Dragon is really going to move on and go on to be the fiercest fashion model the world has ever seen. No, just me. Carry on. Well, there you have it, folks. These are five more K-pop music videos that ought to be full-length movies. Let me know what you think. I had intended this to be seven music videos to discuss, but I ran out of time. I was only able to do five for this, and I'm so sorry. I am open to continuing this series if you all wish me to go on. Share below more music videos you'd like me to discuss if I was to do a part 5. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons for me. And while you're here, check out many more of my works. And see you next time.